In this lesson, we'll add some freestyle line work to our render. Let's begin. Up to this point, all of the work that we've been doing has been on the materials in our scene. This has laid the groundwork for our image, but there's still one key aspect of the manga style that we're missing, the line work. The line work of a manga is sort of like the skeleton of the image that the rest of the details reside within. We're going to mimic this aspect of manga with a new tool called Freestyle. Freestyle allows us to place lines on the edges of our models in the scene, making it look as though we drew them into the scene before shading in the details with pencil or ink. Let's make sure our file is set up and ready to work before we begin. For this lesson, we'll be switching over here to the rendering workspace found here at the top. We'll need to be in the rendering workspace because these freestyle lines we're adding only show up in the fully rendered image, unfortunately. We won't be able to see them in the viewport like we have been with the materials. This isn't too much of a hassle as this image renders really quickly though. Now on the right side, we're going to go to the rendering properties tab found here at the top. It looks like the back side of a camera. And then before we start making any changes, let's just render our image to see what it looks like without freestyle. So we can do that by going over here to render and then choosing render image or just hitting F12 on your keyboard. And we can see rather quickly that our image has rendered. This render doesn't look bad by any means but it does feel more like a 3D render rather than a hand-drawn image. It's obviously missing something important that will make it look more like a drawing. Let's fix that now. Over on the right side in this Render Properties tab, we can go down here to the very bottom where it says Freestyle. If this isn't twirled open, just click this little arrow to twirl it open so you can see the settings. Next, you'll wanna click on this little box here to turn on the Freestyle settings. And then before we make any changes here, we're gonna go up to the top where it says Slot 1, and we're gonna switch it to Slot 2 which is just a new version of this image. So we can always go back to slot one and see what this render looks like. And if we switch it to slot two and then render our image by going to render, render image, or again, just hitting F12, we can now see what these freestyle lines are actually doing for our image. And now we can see without any changes at all, this render is already looking a lot more like a drawing. So if we zoom in, say down here, we can see that all of these edges now have black lines drawn around them as if they were drawn in with a pen. If we flip back and forth between slot one and slot two, we can see what this image looks like without those lines. And it's a pretty significant difference. So this is without the lines and this is with the lines. What used to be a transition down here between basically identical white faces now has a nice stark black line breaking it up and giving this object here more form. This really helps reinforce these shapes. As a callback to previous decisions, you can also see that these black lines are visible within the shadows. If we had left the shadows completely black like they were before we turned them into gray, we wouldn't have been able to see these lines at all. This is why it was important to use that shader to RGB node to make sure that the shadows in our scene weren't quite fully black. That's what's allowing us to see these black lines on the sides of these pipes and on the shadow side of the bridge. This will be equally important when we get to the grease pencil lessons as well. Now that we know what freestyle does for our image, let's make some adjustments to the line work. The first change is a really easy one. We're just going to make these lines a little bit thinner. They don't look bad right now, but they will look a little bit better in distant areas if the lines weren't quite so thick. So we'll just go down here to the bottom where it says line thickness. And we're gonna change this from one to 0.75, hit enter, and that'll make these 0.75 pixels rather than one full pixel. Now, after making this change, you're not gonna notice your image update at all. That's because you need to re-render it. So we'll go over here and then hit render image. And now we can see here in these distant areas, the black lines don't quite touch, so we can still see a little bit of this wire here. Now as it gets further and further back, we can see that these wires are pretty much entirely black, but it does help for the ones that are a little bit closer. There are a few other changes that we can adjust, but we're gonna need to go to the view layer properties to see those. So to do that, we're gonna go over here and go to this menu that looks like three different pictures laying on top of each other. So we can click this to switch to that tab. Now let's scroll all the way down here to the bottom until we start seeing freestyle. And then here we have a bunch of different options. There are a ton of different changes that you can make about how the freestyle lines are displayed. We won't be going over most of these settings as that could be an entire class on its own, but we will touch on just a few of them that are important elements for our render. The first set of changes that we'll be looking at are down here underneath edge type. We can see that there's a list here of different checkboxes. By default, silhouette, crease, and border are selected. In most situations, these three options work for the majority of renders. We won't be turning any of these off, but we will be adding one more option. Before we turn this new option on though, let's zoom out on our image and then go all the way up here to the top. And then I'm gonna zoom in on this little balcony here that I have attached to this wall. We can see the freestyle has done a pretty good job of outlining this balcony going all the way around the perimeter of this shape. 
We can tell, however, that it is missing one singular line right here. And we can tell that it's missing because this actually is flat at the bottom. It doesn't come to a perfect point. So there should be a line going across here, but it's missing. This happens because this line doesn't fall into either of the three categories that we have enabled right now. Luckily for us, there is a way to force Blender to place this line work on whatever edge we want though. To do this, we're gonna go down here and we're gonna check on edge mark. We just click this little button here. Now let's re-render our image to see this change. So we can go up here, render, render image. And now with our image rendered, edge mark turned on, we can see that this missing line has magically appeared. Well, not entirely magically. I did make it show up but I can show you how I did it. For this explanation here, feel free to just watch. This is a pretty simple process, so you shouldn't have any issues figuring it out just by watching what I do. So again, no need to follow along here, just watch what I'm doing. I'm going to head back to the layout workspace, then I'll select this balcony and zoom into it. Now I can hit tab to go into the edit mode, and then I'll hit two to switch to the edge mode. And then I can just click off this model to deselect all the edges. Now you should notice that the one edge that we had issues with before not showing up is marked here in green. This edge being shown in light green helps to note that it's been marked as a freestyle edge. The edge mark setting that we turned on simply allows us to choose which edges are forced to have lines on them. And we do this by manually marking edges. This allows us to go into edit mode on any model in the scene, select as many edges as we like, and mark them forcing them to receive line work regardless of whether they fit into those original three default categories. To mark an edge, all you need to do is select it here in the edit mode, then right click and go down here to where it says mark freestyle edge. So after marking it, we can see if we click off that it's the same green color as the other one. So if we re-rendered this image, we would see now that we would have a black line here extending the entire length of this green line. If you accidentally mark an edge that you don't want marked anymore, you can simply select that edge right click and then choose clear freestyle edge and that'll remove that mark. With this process understood, we're gonna go back to the rendering workspace. So I'll just go back up here and go to rendering. The balcony isn't the only edge mark that I placed in the scene for us, but I won't be going over every other object that I did this on. Feel free to explore the scene on your own or even add more edge marks that you like to accentuate different details. Now let's make a few more adjustments to the line work before we end the lesson. We're gonna zoom out on our image and then go down here to the bottom right. We're just gonna zoom in onto this area as it's a pretty good representation of the changes we're gonna make. Now over here on the right side, we're gonna scroll down, and then over here underneath freestyle strokes, we're gonna make a pretty simple change that just changes the way that the end of the lines are handled. We're gonna go here where it says caps, and we're gonna switch it to round caps instead. This changes the end of the strokes from squares into round edges instead. I'll be 100% honest, I'm not sure that you'll even notice this change in this render, as the vast majority of our line work intersects itself. This means that we'll rarely ever see the end of a bit of line work. However, on the off chance that we do, it usually looks better to have it come to a round edge rather than an abrupt square edge. This is generally a setting I change for all of my freestyle renders. And then lastly, we're going to scroll down here to where it says freestyle thickness. This area allows us to add modifiers to the thickness of the line work to change its appearance. We'll be adding an effect called noise to make our line work a bit more varied. However, I will tell you up front that we'll need to disable this effect later on in the class when we animate our camera. Due to the way that this effect is generated, it causes a really distracting flicker in animations, so it's generally only useful for still images in most cases. I did still want to show you how to add this effect though, because it does make the image look a little bit better if you only intend on making still images. So to add this effect, we're going to click Add Modifier, and then we'll choose Noise. And then if we scroll down, we can see the Noise settings. Before we adjust any of our settings here, let's render the image one more time so we can see what it looks like before we make any adjustments. So we'll just go over here to render and then render image. So now we can see an example of this noise effect at full strength. So we haven't lowered any of these settings or made any adjustments. While this hasn't really improved the look of our image, it is an obvious example of what this modifier is doing. This noise modifier varies the thickness of the freestyle line work at random intervals. We can see that here. It gets really thin, and then it gets thick, and then it gets thin again. At the current strength, it's obviously way too strong, but we can adjust these parameters to improve its appearance. We only really have two parameters to change for this modifier. So we'll go down here, and we're going to change the influence to 0.1, and then we'll change the period to 20 instead. 
Let's quickly explain what each of these sliders do. So for the influence slider up here, you can think of this as the overall strength of the effect. We turned ours down to just 0.1 because we want this noise effect to be much more subtle than it was. So essentially we set it down to 10%. For the amplitude setting found just below it, this setting controls how strong the peaks and the valleys of the line are. Lower values will make this randomization of the thickness less strong, so this is controlling how thick and how thin the line is allowed to get. The period setting, just below that, one we actually did change, changes how close together these peaks and valleys are. Larger values make the variations in thickness further apart and more stretched out along the length of the line. So this would change how close together these thickness variations are. So a higher value will make them further apart, so it's not quite so jam-packed. And then lastly, the seed, is just changing the randomization of this pattern. Okay, now that we understand what this is doing, let's re-render our image to see how these changes have improved the image. We can really see how it's improving the look of the line. We can see that the lines have a really nice, natural, hand-drawn appearance thanks to this new noise pattern. The variations in line weight give them a little bit more life, as it feels like the illustrator decided to use a lighter or heavier touch on certain lines to imply further details. So we can see here that this thin line on the either end, and then there's a thick line in the middle. So maybe this thick line here is a chip out of this concrete. At this point, we have the foundation of our line work finished, but we're not quite done yet. In the next lesson, we'll learn the basics of the grease pencil tool. I'll see you there.